This is part two of making our own variometer and I have the center ball wound and I've got some tips and tricks for you on this. Um, one thing is lots of super glue. The other thing is that, well, let me show you. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, I start off winding this and you can see here right there that it is going counterclockwise. Make sure I say that correctly. It is going counterclockwise. And I got up here to the center ridge and my plan was to just cut across. There's a groove right there. Cut across there and then go wind down this side because the windings have to all go in the same direction. Okay, I got up there and I found out that it is impossible to wind downhill. So, um, yeah, being a super genius, I decided I would just cut the wire and start down here and wind back uphill again, which I did. However, of course, I got the windings on there backwards. So the trick here is that you see this side is going counterclockwise. You can see the wire starts out right there and runs that direction, which is counterclockwise. But on this side, you can see there that this is running clockwise. It is going that way. Yeah, okay. And where I cut the two wires, so what I did is it, to keep from going over this ridge, I just cut the wire and I poked it down through there. That's what these two wires are. Poked it down through there. Then I wound up from this side and I, where is it? Should be right. Oh, there it is. Went around past it. Uh, wound up to here and then went down in there. However, you'll notice that here the wire is traveling clockwise and here it is traveling counterclockwise. So, oopsie, yeah, uh, my logic was backwards. So remember that it'll, if this side is going counterclockwise like this one, this side will be going clockwise. Okay. The other thing is you start out and you do your first three to five turns and then you put a lot of super glue on there. Got it on my fingers uh, as proof, but you put a lot of super glue on there and just wait for it to dry. Any slackness in this causes it to just spring right off there. I restarted about five times. So yeah, I learned the lessons the hard way. Even small gaps like, I don't know if you can see that, it's less than my fingernail. Even small gaps like that start to add up. And as soon as they add up to even half the width of the wire, it just pops right off of there. Oh yeah. Okay. So now what do I have to do? I have to go in here and I have to reattach these two wires. These are the, this is where it goes down here and this is where it goes down here. So I am going to have to come in here and scrape this wire and solder it and join these two together. And being careful because the one thing this plastic does not like, this plastic is tolerant of a lot of stuff, but it does not like heat. And so I'm going to have to like put some damp rags or something in there to uh, prevent the plastic from heating and melting on me. Um, okay, so that's that. And then uh, the other thing is that when I got done, I basically just put stripe after stripe of super glue along here in order to uh, bind the, the uh, windings together and to the core. Okay, so let's solder this thing and uh, that should be it for this step. Well, we got her all soldered up. I just used the wet tissue, stuffed it inside there so the plastic wouldn't melt. And the only uh, damage was this got pushed up so I just have to push it back down and put a little super glue on there and that should do it. Um, but otherwise we just, uh, spread this out, poke it down inside here and ouch, ouch, still a little bit sharp. Um, and that, yeah, my hands are in the way as always. But yeah, the shaft will, uh, shaft goes through here this way and we'll just go right through there. Make sure that's out of the way, but 
otherwise we're all good. And that's it for this uh, phase two, part two of building our own variometer.